Hello, welcome to Have Roots, Will Travel. My name is Lisa Elvin Stoltari, and I'm a genealogist and a passionate traveler. This past year, we've been exploring Nefi Doha. We're taking each and every one of them, the king's daughters, as they're called in English, and um, we are examining them and really kind of giving them their due. And so without further ado, let us start on number 96. Regular viewers of the channel know that I produced a video called Nifi Joa, the program 2.0. Have a look at that in the playlist and it will give you the ins and outs of the program and give you a really good perspective of what your ancestor would have gone through. Today's Nifi Joa is brought to you by a viewer request and her name is Marie Hue. When I looked in my files, there was the um, my best friend's daughter, this is a great grandmother of hers as well. So let's get to know Marie a little bit. Olivoué, which is a city on the riverside in northern France. It's the capital of the region of Normandy. And Rouen has an amazing historical story and was at one time the largest city in medieval Europe. It played a prominent role in both English and French histories from the 11th to the 15th century. Joan of Arc herself was tried and buried burned alive actually, in 1431 in this arena area. Rouen is a city of cultural and educational significance, the Museum of Fine Arts, Le Sec des Tournelles, and the Rouen Cathedral are all major, major uh, attractions. The University de Rouen at Normandy is a prestigious and educa educational institution located here as well. It was from this area that the Statue of Liberty sailed in June of 1885. Now, Marie was born June 1st, 1642, notice, in the Protestant temple in the Rouen, Normandy. So she was a Huguenot. Her parents were Marc Huguet-Hue and Marie Crespe. So I have a picture here of of Rouen, present day, then the church where she would have been baptized, and of course is no more, was destroyed um, in the uprisings around 1690s or so. And we have a picture of where Rouen is um, in relationship to, you know, all of France. So let's see how she gets to New France. So Marie came to New France at the age of 23 with a dowry of about 300 pounds. So she would sail on the Saint-Louis de Dieppe and arrive in um, New France, September 25th, 1667. The groom that she selects and who selects her, his name was Jean Boissemy, and he was born in 1649, 1641 in the parish of saint pochard This is the church that actually dates from about 1000 AD. It was rebuilt in the 14th and 15th centuries, um, and but has stood the test of time. He's from the region of France, no, or the town called Poitiers, and it is in the department of Vienne, and is in the ancient province of Poitou. Um, and this area is among the oldest, everything in France is old, but this is really old. And um, we see uh, vestiges of the Romans and all of that in archeological digs that they do. The, I wanted to uh, just show you a picture of what it looks like, because again, so charming. Um, you just want to sit and have a cup of coffee, right? I mean, an uh, espresso or cappuccino. Um, his parents were Pierre Boissemi and André Bonnet. So let's have a look at how Jean arrived in New France. So this is a little different because Jean arrives in 1664, a full year before the Carignan Regiment. He's presumably an engagé or someone that somehow found his way to Quebec. He then joins up with the Carignan soldiers in the company of Narrois, which arrived on September 14, 1665. So Marie arrived on the 25th of September, 1667, and she did contract a marriage with a man named Adrien Lacroix on October 18th, but it was canceled. But so a couple of you know months later, on January 7th, 1668, she, she and Jean were married at Quebec City. And this is their marriage certificate or their marriage record, I should say. So they would settle in a town called Charlebourg, which is a borough of Quebec City now. 
um, but it's got a rich and resonant history itself. The origin of Charlebourg began with the Concession of the Seigneurie of Notre Dame, the Auge, in 1626. The Seigneurie extended from the Charles River northward and would encompass the modern borough of Charlebourg. In 1665, the intendant, Jean Talon, set out to establish three new villages further north on the plateau. And that's where you get you get the um, Bourg Royal, Charlebourg, and Petit Oven. Um, but they would settle in Charlebourg. Um, the first of the villages, and you'll note that um, they would have kind of a square and it was kind of like shaped like a star. So the, the they would have a, um, a a five arpent square, the le Trécari is what it was called, and this was reserved for the church, the presbytery, presbytery, and the cemetery. The homes of the settlers would then locate all, around the periphery of the Trécari, the church, and the plots of land would form kind of a star shape. Um, in the second village I didn't get the star shape; it got kind of a semi semi circular, um, and the third. Um, I not I don't think was was a square, but not quite as prominent as Chalabul. And you can see in the aerial view that was taken in the 60s and the 1960s, I think, um, still is really you can really see the star shaped pattern here. Um, Chalabul is first and foremost an agricultural area, and it, it would eventually become a vacation destination for inhabitants of Quebec City. Um, and it was in, 70, in 1976, the municipalities of Charbourg, Est, um, and Notre Dame de Laurentides, Orsonville, and the city of Charbourg were merged into one city. And then 25 years later, in 2002, Charbourg was in turn merged with other municipalities in Quebec City to form a new, larger city. And Charbourg became one of the boroughs of Quebec City at that at that. Um, Time. And it was originally called uh, Bourgoya, but it was changed in honor of Charles Borromy, um, who was a patron saint. This Catholic saint was a leading figure of the Counter Reformation, -reformation combat against the Protestant Refor Reformation. An 18th century British map depicts the name as Charles Borg. That's where it gets that. So let's have a look at the family they created. So um, Marie and Jean would have uh, nine children. Elisabeth um, would marry Claude Dubreuil and have three children, all of whom made it to adulthood before her early death at 34. Pierre would die at four years of age. Jean would die at 15. Charles would marry Anne Chamard and have eight children, all of whom would make it to adulthood. Marie Madeleine married Pierre Joubert and had two children, both of whom made it to adulthood before her early death at 26. Marguerite would marry Joseph Lozy and did not have any children before her death. In a terrible twist of faith, Madeleine and Marguerite would die within three days of each other and two weeks after the death of their sister. I have to assume, and I, I think I read that it, there was an epidemic at that time. Um, certainly, I can't even imagine Maggie losing three of her daughters within a month. I, I, the tragedy of that, I mean, it's just amazing to me that she could have even gone on. Having lost three of her daughters the previous year, she then would lose her husband, Jean, on the 13th of July, 1703, of smallpox. He is buried at the Chalabourg um, Cemetery. At his death, they would have been married 44 years. Marie herself would go on to live another 14 years. She died the 19th of October, 1716, at the hospital at the Hôtel du Québec and is buried in the cemetery. She was 72 years old. There are three resources to help you continue your search. La Société des Filles du Roi et Soldats du Carignan, which is an organization that I belong to. I'm actually the membership chair. It's a great organization, of course, I'm biased. But even before I was a member, I would use the website because it has so much information. The second resource that I would recommend is Fille du Roi Descendants, which is a Facebook group that I belong to and absolutely think is a remarkable place to kind of 
merge and uh, kind of get to know other people and, and their information. And then we have Migration, which is a website dedicated to the Filles du Roi and the Carignan soldiers. Um, all about them. Everything you ever wanted to know, check it out. By looking at the people that Marie had in her life and the losses that she had, we can see that she had a challenging time. And um, to sustain the loss of three grown daughters um, and uh, a husband early on is just an amazing um, thing to go through. And I salute her strength and her, her conviction. She just kept going and going. Um, and um, she actually, by 1729, she and Jean would have uh, 80 descendants, which is a credit to them as well. And um, so we thank them for their contribution and for the, you know, the pain that they went through as well in their lives. So with that, we bid you adieu. And I will say au revoir until I see you on episode number 97.